Mage builds in Smite are often debated, but instead of guessing which builds are optimal, I've run the numbers. Using a mathematical model that simulates both burst damage idol appearing at the top of the dps chart and this item doesn't allow you he to always kind of says like the same thing in the beginning so it's basically just this is just kind of gathering it all this is first item uh dps avatars is number one but it's the most expensive yada 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 tease more often because it doesn't have any cooldown rate on it but it's 140 intelligence makes up for this boosting your ability damage enough to make it a high dps item next on the chart is chronos pendant a high cooldown rate item whose passive reduces your cooldowns by one second every 10 seconds mathematically agree, this Dr. passive Jacobs, effectively agree. provides an extra 10 percent cooldown reduction across all of your abilities this is extremely strong because it's not subject to the usual diminishing returns of standard cooldown rate in other words even if you've already got high cooldown rate this passive still gives you consistent value. Yeah. 10% is actually so OP. Time. That kind of efficiency can make a massive difference in extended fights, objective control, and clearing the jungle. We'll see later that Chronos Pendant is one of the highest DPS items throughout the game. Next, we have Spear of Desolation, no a surprise. high intelligence item that also has a small amount of cooldown rate. This combination of stats makes it a great first combined item with one of those broken passives in the game. Damage. Divine Ruin appears next, with high intelligence, which it's is a surprising. Great first item when considering DPS but also has extremely high burst damage and minion clear potential when we consider its passive, which arcs damage between enemies. Moving down the list, we have Doom Lord, Rod of Tahuti, the Cosmic Horror, Ancient Signet, Totem of Death, the World Stone, and Soldier. Now let's consider the cost of these items. Cost is important because it determines how much time it will take for each of these items to come online and can help us define the power curve Wrap of each of these up. items, or essentially ask the question, is the item's damage worth its price? Once we do consider Power Curve, Chronos Pendant does come out on top. Spear of Desolation and Divine Ruin are quite close behind. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting that Divine Ruin is considered this good. I always thought of Divine Ruin as pretty ass. But like Chronos Deso is one of like the core builds. It's like Chronos Deso or Chronos Poly. But it's it's very interesting to see Divine here. Curious that Divine's here, but Poly's not. The rest of the item's falling off quite significantly. So Chronos Pendant is good for overall DPS, meaning it will be the best for extended fights. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. So now let's look at the top burst damage items for mages. These items will provide the highest damage for a single rotation of a god's abilities. At the top of the list is, of course, Dreamer's Idol, the yep. highest intelligence item in the game. Then we have Divine Ruin, which we already Interesting. saw is in the highest DPS items. Meaning this is a great Divine item Rune, for it's both 95 burst and DPS. It has less than then we have two so. high intelligence items in Doom Orb and Rod of Tahuti. Ancient Signet, whose passive provides great burst damage, and then Spear of Desolation, which again also has high DPS, and so it is a solid first item for maximizing both burst and damage over long periods of time. The Cosmic Horror is also great for maximizing both burst and DPS. You might be surprised to see Obsidian Shard appearing here, given it provides Percept Penetration, which should be good in the late game and against tankier targets. But 35% Penetration is a lot, and is even effective against Squishies in the early game. We also have Polynomicon appearing, really? and I haven't- That seems crazy to me, that Divine Rune is considered considered a good first item actually considered its passive damage in my simulation but if you can get one or two passive procs in a fight this is probably the highest burst damage item for mages let's consider the power curve of each of these items what about the item that gives you an extra 200 percent scaling is the highest damage item <laughs> not me dreamer's idol rod of tahuti and obsidian shard fall really far down the okay so cost issue with obshard so obshard is really not that good i guess it is just like a if you could choose any first item, Obstrad really isn't that bad. Because it is expensive. So. Okay. List. So they shouldn't be considered as first items. The three items that stand out are Divine Ruin, having the best Divine first Rune item. Divine Ruin has now appeared two times. What am I missing with this item? 40 plus 20% int. 15 second cooldown. I mean, like, am I just, like, missing something with this? I mean, I guess you could use it. 15 seconds is pretty low. Like, isn't it just worse than Signet? It's slightly more int. It's worse damage early. 242 versus... 249. Hmm. For the cost in the game, Doom Orb, Agent Signet, and Spear of Desolation. So I would consider all three of these items... Does Doom Orb proc on minions? 
No, it's just enemy guards. As first items, depending on whichever you prefer. So overall, we've concluded four solid items on majors. Chronos Pendant is the best for DPS, and will be solid if you have great poking abilities, anticipate long fights with enemies, first item divine. or if your gods benefit greatly from cooldown rate, like Merlin with his stance switching, Agni with his three charges on his ult, or Janus who can get value out of the extra mobility provided by low cooldowns. Spear of Desolation is great for both DPS and burst damage, but is a little on the expensive side. Divine Ruin is solid for both burst and DPS and is relatively cheap. Doom Orb is a little expensive but does provide a lot of damage and mana sustain. As we go through this video, I'll use the information- We don't need mana sustain, guys. Mana sustain is not needed to create three builds. Just build sands of one time and you'll never run out of mana. DPS, one that maximizes burst, and one that attempts to walk a line between burst and DPS. So here is the first item in each of these builds. Now let's look at the best second item for majors. We'll look at DPS first, and there aren't any big surprises. If you're trying to maximize the DPS of your abilities, then Chronos Pendant is a must-buy item and should be paired with pretty much all of the I made this video? It's like Smite Maths. It's the guy who makes the YouTube um, ADC builds items we've already seen. Once we cracked for power curve, we can see some really clear winners, with Chronos Pendant and Divine Ruin being the most cost-efficient pairing, followed extremely closely by Chronos Pendant and Spear of Desolation. I mean, th this is three pretty, expe uh, pretty expected paths. Deso, you're kind of reliant on getting kills for this to be the best item. <laughs> like, I don't really understand what's separating Signet and Divine. I guess when it goes to late, late game, like when you're sitting at like a bunch of items, probably at a point that divine becomes better 138 to divine Two hundred. wait dude is it ever better how much int do you need to get to for divine to even be better this is 260 base you have to get up to like a thousand for this to actually be worth more divine could proc twice i mean i guess Your middle tower but so can attack. signet I guess, are you just... Tr is it loot? Yeah, I guess it is just that it can proc on the same god twice. And Ancient Signet. We also have these four pairings, which could still be solid. Totem of Death is... This is not good. This is not good. I don't think this one is very good either. I think this one can be okay, and then I think this one can be okay. But, like, these two are just not good. It's expensive. But I've modeled it at just two stacks of a possible five, so it is being undervalued here. If you're playing a god that utilizes it well, like Anubis, it's Anubis and that's every it. tick of his abilities, then Totem of Death even won't Merlin be too like bad Polish better, even in the early game. These three combinations are also okay, with the Soul Gem build being good on gods that can quickly stack it, like Merlin and Agni. That that's the problem with Soul Gem a lot of the time is gods that can quickly stack it are also gods that can quickly use Poly. And then Polly's just broken and Soul Gem is balanced. And it also has the bonus of having lifesteal and a heal on its passive. If we look at the best two items for burst damage, Rod of Tahuti, paired with Dreamer's Idol, is the highest possible damage combination. I mean, it's the two expensive but is of course, items. too expensive to consider in the early game. The first five combinations are the highest possible burst damage items, but these six are the highest possible damage for the price. If I just... <laughs> Building Divine and Signet, first two items. ...listed the top 11 highest possible damage builds, they would all contain Rod of Tahuti or Dreamer's as idle which is unrealistic so i've added cost efficient builds here at the end if we adjust for cost divine ruin and ancient signet <laughs> is the most this is crazy book and divine book and divine how much power is book yeah i mean that's interesting just amount of burst damage for the it best is cheap. possible price followed closely by these three combinations. Finally, I've tried something a bit different by putting together a list of the top 10 builds that aim to balance DPS, burst, and cost efficiency. These are intended to represent the most well-rounded item pairings for majors, strong in both sustained and- Dude, this is like sold that the best two are gem. I mean, sorry, is Chronos Pendant and Divine. It might just be a like a cost uh, issue because it is just- what, 150 gold cheaper? Your Just 100 gold cheaper? But I mean, like, Sans, Chronos Divine, 
instantly just puts you at 200 damage while also being gold efficient. That said, it's important to note that the math behind this ranking isn't absolute. The process of normalizing across different damage types and item costs involves a number of assumptions and simplifications. So while these builds are directionally very strong, they shouldn't be taken as strictly definitive. Think of this list as a practical guideline rather than a hard rule. It's a useful way to identify items that consistently perform well across multiple metrics. These are the item combinations when considering all three of these datasets. Of these combinations, these three combinations have the best DPS for the cost, and these two have the best burst damage for the cost. But overall, all 15 of these item combinations will be solid to build. So now, let's... Maybe, maybe there's something to divine and uh, signet too. I guess I am level 20. That, that just didn't proc. Your middle tower is under attack. Add some of these items to the three possible builds that we're crafting. Now let's look at the best three item combinations, again starting with DPS. These are the top 12 DPS combinations of three items for majors, which isn't actually that useful, because now most of the top builds are bringing back combinations of Dreamer's Idol, Rod of Tahuti, and Obsidian Shard. These items do have super high DPS, but they are too expensive to consider having more than one in combinations of three items. So instead, here are the top 12 highest DPS builds for the cost. These three item combinations are now much more realistic, with Kronos Pendant, Agent Signet, and Gemma Focus being the most cost-efficient DPS build, followed by Kronos Pendant, the Cosmic Horror, and Rod of Tahuti. This combination is more expensive for its overall damage output, which is why it appears second on the chart but we can see its overall DPS is much greater than the first build once you have completed all of the items. I assume this combination gives the Cosmic Horror just enough intelligence for its passive of extra cool- Yeah, how close is that? Three twelve, yeah. You're just above it. It's interesting how broken Chronos Pennant is, though cooldown rate at 285 intelligence to kick in, increasing the overall DPS of this combination. The rest of the combinations all include Kronos Pendant and variations of Spear of Desolation, Agent Signet, Gem of Focus, Soul Gem, Divine Ruin, and Totem of Death. So you can pick which combination suits your playstyle and god the best. For the highest burst damage of three item combinations, I'm looking at the top 12 most cost efficient builds again. Otherwise, we'd just get combinations of Dreamer's Idol and Rod of Tahuti. Divine Ruin, Ancient Signet, and Rod of Tahuti is the most cost-efficient pairing of three items. But for much, much cheaper, you can get Book of Thoth, Divine Ruin, and Ancient Signet, which still has good burst damage. Of course, if you have Book of Thoth, you'll have to buy it earlier in order to have it stacked, reducing your early game power curve. Overall, to have the maximum burst damage, you'll want combinations of Divine Ruin, Book of Thoth, Ancient Signet, Rod of Tahuti, Doom Orb, or Obsidian Shard. We also have our first instance of Necromicon appearing, which gains 50 intelligence every time you get a god kill or assist. I've modeled it at just one stack, and have taken it out of my simulation up until this point because its stacks are far too temperamental to try and model consistently. Yeah, I mean, but just so you know, Necromicon is the highest risk-reward item in the game and could be considered if you're having a particularly good game. Again, no. here is a graph that attempts to account for burst Never damage, build cost, and price. And these are the combinations that appear. All of these combinations will be solid, with this build having the highest DPS and the highest DPS for the cost, but not great burst. And this build having the best burst for the cost and still good DPS. Now let's add some items to the three builds that we're developing. All of these builds will have solid build Yeah, packs. Necro. On to four item combinations now, and we're looking at the top 10 highest DPS builds. I've now changed the DPS on the Y axis to time to kill the whole enemy team, because at this point in the game, team fights are likely to break out, so you'll be damaging the whole enemy team, and my damage calculations now account for this. The top DPS combination- I feel like this is just bad, like, you're never gonna kill the entire enemy team at any point. Like, even- Like, this is just overkill damage. The best builds for these are gonna be Kronos Pendant items. Nerd, okay. Like, Kronos is gonna be in every single build, because 
You're never gonna have enough damage to kill more than one person. ...is Chronos Pendant, Totem of Death, Rod of Tahuti, and Obsidian Shard. It's worth noting that Totem of Death has a high DPS against all enemy types because of its cooldown rate, and Obsidian Shard's 35% penetration is effective against all enemy types, not just tanks. So even though these builds look like they're focused purely on killing tanks, they aren't. All of these builds are good against squishies as well. Obsidian Shard appears in every single one of these top 10 builds. And so I would urge that every game you buy Obsidian Shard in your fourth item slot. It's expensive, but its damage is unrivaled even when you consider its cost. Then we have Chronos Pendant, Obsidian Shard, Rod of Tahuti, and the Cosmic Horror appearing as the second highest possible DPS build. So maybe this, the, there, there seems to be something with this build. Chronos Pendant, Rod, uh, Cosmic Horror, and then Ob Shard. Kind of like how this build looks. All of these builds contain Chronos Pendant and Obsidian Shard and then combinations of Rod of Tahuti, Totem of Death, Ancient Signet, Spear of Desolation, or Soul Gem. So pick whichever item you like the most. When we consider the power curves of these builds, these three come out on top. This graph is showing the top 10 most cost-efficient builds when considering DPS. Most of them still contain Obsidian Shard, proving that it is worth its high price tag. But if you really want a cheap build with good DPS, Chronos Pendant, Gem of Focus, the Cosmic Horror, and Ancient Signet is a solid combination. This graph is showing the top 10 most cost-efficient builds when considering burst damage. This average burst is calculated by averaging the amount of burst you do to each enemy type. Again, Obsidian Shard appears in almost every combination. The most cost-efficient burst build is Thoth, Ancient Signet, Rod of Tahuti, and Obsidian Shard. Now let's add to our three builds with the information we've gathered. I'm going to put Obsidian Shard in every single one of these item slots. Let's move on to five item combinations. For the highest DPS builds, we have a very clear I'm too winner. Dumb for Chronos this. Pendant, the Cosmic Horror, Totem of Death, Obsidian Shard, and Rod of Tahuti, with massive Massive amounts of cooldown and penetration, its overall DPS is super high because cooldown rate seems to be the largest factor when determining a build's DPS. When thought? I first wrote the code for DPS calculations, I assumed combat went on forever, with the god casting abilities the instant they came off cooldown, infinitely. Under that assumption, cooldown is always at its maximum value, because every percentage reduction directly translates into more ability casts forever. This made cooldown look stronger than it actually is in real gameplay. In reality, fights are finite, they might last 10, 20, or 30 seconds, and not every ability will cycle multiple times. Cooldown is only valuable if it actually lets you squeeze in extra casts during the fight window. If you only manage two rotations of abilities before the fight ends, then cooldown has far less <laughs> impact than in the infinite model. To address this, I changed the model so that DPS is calculated over exactly two non-ultimate ability rotations. So it's like the god casts their ultimate ability once at the start, then cycles through their first, second, and third abilities. And once those come off cooldown, they cast them again. DPS is then averaged over however long it took to complete those two rotations, which is determined by the cooldown of the longest non-ultimate ability. This creates a more realistic measure of burst and sustained damage in a typical fight. But it also means that ultimates only ever get used once in this calculation. As a result, cooldown reduction has no effect on ultimate damage DPS in this model. Since lowering a 90 second cooldown to 60 seconds still doesn't matter if the simulated fight is only 20 seconds long. For the same reason, the world stone, which only enhances Fortnite your stream. ultimate's cooldown, will never appear as a top performer in these DPS rankings because in my model, cooldown rate doesn't affect the DPS of ultimate abilities. I might change this in future videos, but for now, this is interesting.